at our company, this is how we do it. We don't always have the talent at hand. I am the person that helps the team find these people. With people applying to you, do you actually look through those application forms? I leave in the morning, don't be mad, oh no I know you got some things hurting your bed, although I got a million voices in my head, hello All of them keep telling me just oh. Honestly, they lay, honestly, they lay Okay, so I'm here with Milo. Hello. And Milo works for Submarine, Submarine. Animation. Submarine Animation. We're at a company in Amsterdam and we make 2D, 3D hybrid films, stuff like Undone, Apollo 10 and a half, Where's Anne Frank, Good Well in the I always forget this name, and Labyrinth of the Turtles. I that's think a that's, cool name. That's a cool name, right? Uh, and all these other really cool projects. And I'm going to show them up on the screen so you can see them for yourself. So your role inside Submarine is recruiter. Yes. Could you describe what exactly your role is in the more detailed way? What does recruitment involve? Basically, so we do a lot of different kind of projects at the company, and we don't always have the talent at hand. Like we, we of course already have like our own network, which I'm also in touch with, who need to fulfill roles like compositing or 3D lighting or 3D, 2D animator. I am the person that helps the team find these people and touch base with them if they're available, if they're interested, and then my colleagues take over and they kind of do uh, the contract stuff and that kind of thing and make you become part of the company yeah and I think it depends on the company like I more have kind of this role of finding people and uh, putting you in database and making my team aware but in other companies I can also imagine they also do other parts of it but it's like at our company this is how we do it yeah but you would say that with a lot of major studios they would have someone in the role that you yes, have which yes. is in finding new talent or talent that, that you can bring in Yes, exactly. On a larger project. Exactly. So we go, I think all of us go to these kind of festivals like Annecy, beautiful right, little yeah. city. Uh, and okay. yeah, we come here to find people. Just sometimes we not, might not even be looking spe for specific roles, but we're just also interested to meet talent and see who is out there, what kind of interesting, cool projects are they doing. And yeah, uh, and just meet people, which is the nicest thing. And they're coming from all over the world. So it's a nice starting point because it's nice to see a face with the portfolio yeah. and get some work but then also that's one thing but then also how they present themselves on like with yeah. their portfolios is a big part of that like the next step yeah and i'm gonna see what kind of portfolio i'm getting in but there are always some things that we run into that we feel like this information is missing yeah um, first of all we're making this for animators aren't yes. we? Yeah. Uh, animators and artists mm -hmm. who are looking for tips and and help on how to get hired especially in their first commission uh, their first job for a studio yes and what they can do to get their foot in the door and I know that you have a particular process that you use for finding people when your superiors tell you okay we need this many animators for this new upcoming project you have to go and find them what's your process for finding them uh, that's a good question it can always defer a bit but like one of the methods we use for example is looking at short films mm -hmm. and being like okay for, for example there was a film a couple of years ago it was a 3d film that we were doing in the netherlands and we were looking for a lighting artist a 3d lighting artist in blender so these a couple of pieces of information that are very important because yeah a 3d lighting artist is a specific role doesn't necessarily mean you're an animator or, yep. a composite or the other stuff that's what we needed and also someone that works in blender and now when you start looking for that kind of person not everyone has it on their 
like portfolio that they are a blender artist or a Maya artist so that kind of was that's the first hurdle you have to overcome is right. finding the right person that fits all these criteria yeah. and then finding a blender film like I just look for okay what are 3d short and uh, blender films that different schools are making and I found this Swiss graduation film that looked really nice and I just went into the credits found a name that was the lighting artist looked him up on LinkedIn found his reel there and then he was hired maybe not as easy as that but like in a little process we came to that point that he yep. was eventually part of the team and like we're in the Netherlands so Switzerland's quite far away we managed to kind of just find someone from a very different place do you ever fly out to an animator you, do you or do you do things remotely if we, they're in for a this different specifically country? was remotely like sometimes okay. we ask the uh, animators if they're up for it to come to the Netherlands if it's like a longer project it's more interesting but in this particular case it was him working remote uh, yeah. for this particular production. So I want to recap on what you said just then because that is so essential. So you searched for a film and you searched in the search terms, you used the word Blender. Yes, because Blender, best Blender shorts. <laughs> the software was super important for that because of being integrated into the team already and what software they're using, which is Blender. So yes. you searched up Blender shorts you looked to the credits to where lighting artist was listed, found the name, searched that into LinkedIn, and then from LinkedIn found the links to the portfolio of that artist. From that, we can take away certain things. If you're working in a particular software, use that software in the title. That would help, right? Yeah, that could also help. Like, especially also just having it on your LinkedIn, having it on having your it website, on LinkedIn, your yeah. about section. Just having it clearly out there yeah. is often something that I just don't see. <laughs> Otherwise, if you found a 3D film, you would have to ask them yes. what the software would be, and that would be more tedious. It would be more tedious. And sometimes we do it, because then we just think the artist is really good, so we right. want to put in the effort. Oh, yeah. please, do you do, you do this yeah. too? Uh, but especially when it comes to Blender, because it's such a specific software, it's coming up now, but there's still a lot of artists that are not using it. Yeah, yeah. it really depends on the studio, what, what they are using. Besides us, I think it's for all the companies quite good to know. Yeah, it's important when it's a larger team Yes, that you're working in the same software. Okay, let's switch sides now. Let's say you were an animator, up and coming animator. You've made a few original pieces of animation, but you haven't worked yet in a team on a short film. So you don't have that name in the credits of a film, so to speak. Uh, what would be some of the moves you would make to get noticed by recruiters? So there's two things. You have your portfolio that you can go to events to, like yeah. and show to people. That's often that people prefer that you can just scroll through it. But the other thing that I think is for, for if you're based in some kind of little village somewhere in the distance and everything seems so far away, it's just a case of just emailing a lot of people and just seeing, okay, this is my work, I hope you like it. But then how you present that work is a very important part. Like often what we don't necessarily keep uh, PDF documents of portfolios. We prefer websites and a good LinkedIn that we can find kind of what stuff you've done uh, well, if you haven't done that much then yet, it's mainly that work right. or which school you study at. Part of having a good website is also slightly knowing what are your skill sets, what do you like to do. Yep. And animation is more than just doing 2D animation, it's also 
to the compositing. There are different roles, or I heard today, to the posing. There's yeah. different things you can do and marketing yourself on that. And that sounds horrible, but like just putting on your reputation side side sections. Yeah. Like this is my storyboarding. This is my 2D animation. Right. Uh, can already help uh, the person looking for people to be like, I am looking for a storyboard of this and I'm coming on this website, I immediately know where I need to go. Because I often feel like when I come to a website, I just see all these things and I don't necessarily immediately see what I need. Yeah. And then I go on because it's just, we, there's little time. Um, and that's also why Instagram, I, for me particularly, I don't find it less interesting if I look for a specific role like a storyboard artist or because the, there's always a mix of things. So I have to look for the specific piece of work. And then often if I also share it with the team, they'll completely don't have any time so I can just show one thing but then they, were, they often want to see a bit more so having that bigger overview always helps so you like to see these things categorized yes and that makes your job easier and faster which reduces the kind of resistance you have which again just puts an animator who does those things at the top of the pile instead of at the bottom of the pile yeah, but it's also like you have a better sense of what you want to do or like what do you feel like you are yeah. as an artist or as a maker or a craftsman and sometimes you're also still figuring it out it is easy as just saying okay storyboard artist this is my 2d animation work this is my illustration work and this is my personal work personal work you throw, throw all the different kind of things together because then people could just oh this is get a feel for who you are and those other things are more yeah, like i said specific you just want to make it easy at the start and then we can slowly start exploring more because we're like oh we're interested now oh you do this oh you have also this other experience yeah and uh, that thing you said about PDFs, I remember when I was at university, our professors wanted us to have PDF documents of our portfolio and have it all written up. But the website should do all of that for you. Yeah, so the PDF is good for maybe going to events and actually showing the stuff. But for the other stuff, like emailing, the website for me is always more effective. And a CV, a CV is like a formality that's nice, yep. but I don't necessarily look at, as much at it. Because uh, I also feel like on a website you can add that to your about section. Yeah, and the visuals must do most of the work, right? Yeah. Because at yeah. the end of the day, that's what you're exactly. It for. Like in the end, also education doesn't matter <laughs> as much. Yeah. But like it does help sometimes. If, oh, the person has been in an animation workshop or goodbye. Yeah. That's already. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> for reputation. Some reason, reputation it helps, but of course that doesn't really matter if your work's already cool. That does most of the work. I'm interested in Submarine and how maybe it's either different to other animation studios or the same as other animation studios. What would you say are the similarities and differences and who would you consider to be your, I guess, your competitors or, or people in the same space as you that you might cooperate with? So I think we're not necessarily part of the UK mm -hmm. uh, sector yeah. like, of the industry. I do think we have closer connections to Cartoon Saloon. Or, Cartoon Saloon, yeah. But I don't think we're that as up there. Uh, they're so big. Yeah, right they're now, so yeah. big. And just that Irish scene. But in the Netherlands, I think we're one of the, the well, the biggest animation company that's growing quite rapidly. But I think we're on par with stuff like Walking the Dog. It's a studio in Belgium. It's yep. also a studio we will collaborate quite a bit with. And these other up and coming Euro uh, European studios. But I also think the nice thing is we have American projects. So we have uh, done, yeah, like I said, Undone is on Amazon Prime. Yep. We've done this film feature for Netflix and there's a lot more coming up and more possibilities, but we're all still doing a more art house kind of animation. So it's like, we're doing features. We're not doing necessarily commercials. We're doing features and series. We like storytelling, yep. uh, but also trying to experiment with, with different kind of styles, also different kind of forms. Like I said, a hybrid film, we did like a ballet that combines, this, combines 2D backgrounds with 3D characters and live right. action dance. And then also these awesome undone projects where we have rotoscoping, rotoscoping and, yeah. and paint, making hundreds of actual paintings as backgrounds. And then yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff I think that we do. And it's also so nice that it's so different. But we try to be a studio where there is always work for all kind of different kind of animators. Yeah. And sometimes that works. Like we had a couple of years where we had like four or five productions at the same time. Now we have slightly less, but we're again going for the space of having a lot of things going on yeah. we can have a lot of artists. How many like employees would you say you have at any given time or does it expand and contract? It, it's le le What's le the le kind of range then that, that you would say that Submarine has? I, I, I feel like if I say numbers now I will say them wrong but I think like <laughs> now at the moment in the office like so we also have a movie bit uh, section in a department in the documentary so I mainly work for animation yeah and I think there's already like uh, up to like now because we're rounding up a production now and uh, Called Deja the Piano Player, 
it's like a documentary animation and I think there are like 15 20 people working on that now and then yeah. we have an office of like also again 10 15 20 people but a year back we would have up to 200 people yeah or two years back working remotely and in the office but also because of corona obviously you've already kind of established your social media platform of choice is linkedin yes definitely for me after least, that yeah. in terms of video platforms or, or places that are more visual what would you say instagram twitter youtube which uh, ones art station also art kind of station of okay vimeo uh, Vimeo is just where we get a lot of the. Uh, I like, I don't really mind where the the, the clips are on yep. as long as I can. As long as you can see them yeah, and access them easily. I mainly always see Vimeo stuff coming in, but also YouTube is fine. Yeah, but that's less important. Like I think if it's uh, ranking things, is like LinkedIn, I'm to be because then you there you IMDb, find the right. credits of the project. So sometimes if you make a short film, just put the credits on I'm to be. You can list the film on I'm to be yourself. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have ArtStation is a nice space, especially for 3D artists and concept artists. It's a good space to find things. And Instagram is also, it's not that I look at it less, but I have also a colleague that kind of finds people from there. But. And for film festivals, you're here at Annecy. Are there any others that you go to, or is Annecy the main one? That... Annecy is the big main one, but I, in the Netherlands there are a few. There's like Kaboom Kaboom. Animation Festival, okay. which is a really lovely festival in Amsterdam and Utrecht. It's also like a week and it's also a bunkers kind of weird cool. uh, place to be. And I've been to Anima in Brussels, okay. which is also lovely. So mainly now the European like that are quite near. There's also We Are Playgrounds, which is more like an artist's place where the, there is a lot of nice talks yeah. from people that worked on The Lion King, like the art concept art or the character art designers and Tom Moore and all these other people coming there. Yeah. So that's also nice. But these are all Dutch kind of based yeah. things okay. but I'm slowly expanding we're trying to slowly expand and trying to see but it's mainly European market yeah unless there is good wow I feel like if I were to live here just because of the place it's like paradise I think everything would turn out okay <laughs> I think it's also what I'd like to add, which could be important to realize is that sometimes the European market uh, uh, works in a sense that we are dependent on funding from our government. Right. So often what happens is that funding isn't enough. So yeah. we have to collaborate with other countries, put the funding together to make the film. But a, a thing with the funding is that often it's stipulated by the government that we have to have people from the Netherlands, or at right. least based in the Netherlands. Yeah. So often, sometimes when you apply, you might not get a shot at a certain project mainly because of a funding thing. If you're like willing to relocate, then it's fine. Yeah. You just need to ba be based there. But it's of course a bigger choice than it needs to be a so linear that, project. That's one of the reasons outside of your animation standard, there are some other things that could influence whether you get that job or not. Exactly. So it's like never taken personally when you're not like given a job or whatever yeah because it's always it can be so many factors in why someone is not picked like recently there was a case where we had like a background designer who specifically had to make assets so like for this 3d project but in 2d showed great work amazing stuff but there was another artist who had more experience with specifically props and that's why we picked eventually her over the other person but it yeah. doesn't mean that the other person wasn't good it's yeah. just that the other person suited that particular bit of the production better yeah. So it can be as small as that. Yeah, they have specific needs as projects. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got one more question. Yeah. With people applying to you, do you actually look through those applications, application forms? I suppose there is probably a contact form on the websites and things. Is that a go-to source? How much does that actually get seen and brought up? So in the sense that you email us, yeah. and then you fill in the form. And yeah, fill in the form, show your showreel, CV and a resume. Often with the emails is that we do have a little skim. Yeah. And then just also ask here, have a look. Because you never know what comes your way. And if it immediately is something, oh, this is something we can immediately use, utilize yeah. for something. Especially if it's a specific role, if we're looking for a 3D compositor. And then you immediately look because you're like, we yeah. need this role filled now. So yeah. let's have a wee little look if it's any good. Yeah, we fill in the form and you're in our database. And then it's just a case of when we need something of that, we 
look up all these people that are on there and we start you would going. go by the keyword like yeah. 3d compositor yeah. Or, yeah 2d compositor you, you would put that in and then those emails would come to the top yeah what's well, also nice when you're a 3d artist it's or like a 2d compositor or whatever it's nice to show your process a bit especially for 3d artists like showing your wireframes yeah can wireframes be, uh, can give such a good sense that you're not a chaotic yeah. person and give us confidence like oh you know your shit and that's a little example and i feel like also the other things can also just give you a good sense of how you grasp your craft and for 2d animation that could be your rough draft the drawings and your layers system your layer arrangements there are different ways to do that i can see that the battery is running very low on this we're at four percent so i better wrap this up fast so Milo, thank you so much for uh, coming no on worries. and explaining that. I think this is going to be incredibly valuable oh, to so. a lot of animators. So thank you. And uh, that's that. Thank you for watching. Bye. Lay with you all day. Oh, well done. <laughs>